cool off. Oh, cool dear. Off. Take a drink. Have a job. A bit, oh, cheers. It's the first time anybody's written anything for you, is uh, it? Any music, yeah. I think it is. <laughs> yeah. Great compliment. Really? Except uh, there was talk of Shostakovich writing a piano concerto for me. <laughs> but then uh, he discovered I never played the piano, so... Well, it's just as well, because I wouldn't fancy playing the part. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how does how does uh, our band compare to the quintet? Is it? Oh well, it's a different thing entirely, you know. When compare the two, it's it's fun. They're both fun, but the quintet. You, you tune up, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we tune when I bought. But we have a lot, a lot of fun. The old guys are the best. Um, we have a lot of fun with the quintet. It's the best small band I think that I've ever worked with. You know, it's a marvelous trumpet player. Yeah. Uh, called Dick Pierce who um, comes from Stratford in London. Very poor family. They couldn't even afford tinsel for the Christmas tree. They used to have to wait for their grandfather to sneeze. <laughs> Terrible. And, um, and then there's um, John Critchinson on the piano, who's great, you know. He really is a, a nice guy, a good player. The drummer is, uh, is Martin Drew. And he comes from, uh, where did he come from? Northampton. That's a wonderful town. <laughs> If you're a leper. <laughs> um, I come from the East End. Oh, I come from the East End of London. I'm a true Cockney, actually, born with the sound of bow bells and everything. Proud of it. And uh, also a very poor family. My father was always out of work down there in the East End. He was a shepherd. <laughs> I, learned, I learned about sex when I was a kid uh, in the East End by watching dogs in the street, you know. And one thing, one thing I've always remembered, you never let go of the girl's leg. Did you know that? Let's <laughs> uh, see Oh, and then we've got Ron Matthewson on the bass, who comes from uh, uh, the Shetland Islands, which is a, a marvellous place to come from. <laughs> we, we, we spent a, a marvellous fortnight up there one Sunday, I remember. We had this job playing up in the Shetlands. When we got there, they were closed. But, uh, i tell you how quiet it was up there. The local call girl was a virgin. I don't get much quieter than that. <laughs> Listen, in between, in between oh, telling the eggs at the club and managing to get the tenor in your mouth occasionally, uh, is there any like, real famous guests that you really were proud to have at the club that you enjoyed more than any others? Um, that includes the old places. Yeah. Well. yeah well, well, I've enjoyed most of them. I mean, most of the, the great jazz musicians have played there. But uh, occasions that stick in my mind are, are Sonny Rollins when he was there, because he's just fantastic. And Roland Kirk was also a, a marvellous guy. There was one night when we were raided, you know, I mean, the, the, uh, we didn't have the proper licence at that time, and Roland was playing at the, at the club, and we only had a licence to admit members and stuff like that. And we couldn't run that way, so we just ignored it. And Roland used to play on it. A, a number called the Penny Whistle Man, which involved him distributing about a hundred penny whistles to members of the audience, you know, and at a given signal from him, they'd all blow. And uh, he was in the middle of this, of this number, and there were a hundred penny whistles going. I mean, the noise was incredible, like a, a zoo on fire. And just at that time, <laughs> the police uh, chose that moment to raid us, you know, and about 30 plainclothes policemen and police women came into the club and started taking names and addresses of, of people who were drinking, you know, to ascertain whether, whether or not they were members. And I mean, if people didn't, you know, give a shit, they just blew penny whistles in the police in the faces <laughs> of the policemen. And I mean, and the cacophony. I mean, it was just like a, a maniac aviary, you know. And uh, um, one of the guys, our superintendent, come over, came over to me and said, um, tell him to stop about Roland. I said, no, you tell him. You know, <laughs> Roland, uh, being blind, didn't know what was happening, so just carried on playing, you know, and it was absolute chaos for about 20 minutes. I mean, I can laugh about it now, it wasn't too funny then. What do you think about all this? Um, and Rick, and what I'm doing, because I work for you, right? It's right. great to have you working for me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you pay me more than I pay you. <laughs> um, well, right, I mean, that's... Well, I, you know, there's a lot of music I, I like uh, uh, that's going on today. I mean, I, I consider that uh, a great deal of rock and roll is well, nearly all, all of it really is based on the blues in the same way as jazz is. And uh, there are good rock and roll bands and um, not so good rock and roll bands, in the same way there is in, as there is in jazz. I do think that rock and roll owes a great deal to, to jazz musicians, you know, it's not something that hasn't really been uh, uh, fully acknowledged. But it's getting round to that, I think. 
And um, and then I like the kind of uh, easier things like um, the tune that the Andy uh, Fairweather low yeah, wrote yeah. is a pretty tune. I like that very much. And I listen to um, to classical music. I, I love uh, a Ravel and Chopin and Debussy and uh, and Puccini. I love Puccini. Because you've had you've had some like rock and, virtual rock and roll acts down the club, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, we had uh, a group called War. Mm -hmm. I think with Eric Burden. And uh, as a matter of fact, when, when Eric Burden was there with war, uh, Jimi Hendrix came in and sat in one night, and that was his, his last, really his last public appearance. He, well, he right, died, I mean, work for you in that club, I, I, I can, sorry, I know this is... <laughs> Don't you wish sometimes lesson. you could have had a tape recorder running? Oh, marvellous. I mean, several occasions where I'd have loved a tape recorder. I mean, that was one of them. Mm. And there was another time when Ben Webster and Coleman Hawkins, you know, two great classic tenor saxophone players, were in the club and um, and they uh, were talking about old times and uh, I'd give uh, I'd have given anything for a tape record. I mean Ben Webster was such a marvelous character. I mean talk about Jekyll and Hyde. He used to drink a great deal, Ben. Uh, but I will say this: when he worked at the club, he he stayed 99% of the time sober. You know. But uh, when he wasn't working, he'd come down very very drunk. And he came down one night to hear. Coleman Hawkins, and he was very drunk. And you can always, you could always tell when Ben was drunk because he had the tie with the painted lady on it, you know, which was open, and a hat and, and the shirt open at the neck, you know. And and Billy Eckstein came into the club uh, uh, that night, and they hadn't seen each other for years, and they fell on each other, and they rolled on the floor and cuddled each other, and spent the whole night drinking at the bar and talking about old times. And then uh, about three days later, Ben came down the club again, you know, and I said, hello, Ben, it must have been nice to see Billy Eckstein after all this time. And Ben said, Billy Eckstein? I haven't seen Billy Eckstein for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just, fi just, fin going, just finally, going. is there any one person, if you had to name one person that you've never had at the club who you would like there? Just the one person. Oh, oh you mean who's alive now? Well, I mean, dig <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to dig them up for you, I mean, <laughs> one person. It smells well, it Well, you know, there's very few people that haven't worked at the club. I think perhaps I'd like to have uh, Miles there with the band. That would but be we'll nice. have a word with him for you. Please do. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the programme. Okay. You're a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, Ron. I'll do that again. Bless you, mate. Please subscribe and see some of the silly things I get up to. And the musical stuff as well.